Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be taking a little look um, and have a little chat about workflow and templates. Um, and what I mean by workflow, so when it comes to workflow it's about, uh, I'm going to show you how I organise my samples, how I organise my VSTs, my effects um, and how I go about um, starting a new project. So a lot of people ask, you know, how do you start? You start with drums and whatnot. So I'm going to show you that even before that, even before I think about producing music, what go, what um, what what I actually do. So the first thing we're going to look at is templates. So FL, I'm going to use FL Studio. Every door has it. They may work slightly different, but I'm going to show you how FL Studio works. So FL Studio, you've, you've got some templates there, um, some basic ones. What I've got here is a new FL Studio 12.5 when you load it up so like it's like a basic template um, you've not have you not you've not no send tracks anymore they've been taken away um, so I have a basic um, setup which is just completely empty with sends so I have my sends here um, so I'll quickly show you how to do that if you if you know if you if you use an FL Studio so what you need to do is you you go right to the end here uh, you hold control, copy those, control and highlight them all, and then go to uh, dock to right, and then double click this, and you have them all docked to the right. So what you'll then need to do is using your mouse wheel, you need to hit control and highlight all these. So they're now all highlighted, and then you right click and side chain to this track on all of them. Side chain to this track. Um, so it's going to Put all the, run all these through through these sends again so these sends will be good for putting on like reverb uh, and stuff like that so that's what i've done i've because I've, I've used to using these so that's how i've set it up and that's saved as my basic template i always change it as well down to 126 and that's that's how my basic template is but i have another template as well that i'll sometimes um run so when i'm making a track um so this is how i start a basic track so if i'm going to make a track um, if I don't really have an idea of what I'm doing, or I'm starting completely from fresh, or I'm just wanting to jot down ideas, I'll load up a blank template just like this, um, and I'll start jotting the ideas down and stuff like that. Um, now, sometimes I might start with drums, sometimes I might start with synths, you know, of a mess around, and, and so that's why it's completely blank. There's nothing in there. Now, sometimes I will have a reference track. So sometimes I'll have a track that I'm going to work, I'm going to remix, and I will sort of say to myself, well, I like. I like this track. I want it to sound like this track. Um, so in that case, I would I would have sort of a template set up for that. So if I'm going to use reference tracks, I would have a template set up. Now this is going to be a little little complicated, so I'll try to, to stay with this one. So this is called a pre-master with effects. Um, so what I've got when I load this up, I have a basic drum beat. I have a, a true piano in there. So a basic drum beat, true piano. And I have some FX, and I've also copied them to the end, so that means I can just delete them. Uh, you know, I can I can work here, and I've right click, and I've locked to this content, so that means that only the kick will be placed in there, and then the claps, you know, will only go in 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 there. Um, that's why I've kept them in at the end here. So what I've got here is I've got a beat, um, so I can quickly you know start my track off there. and then I have a, a piano in there as well to 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 put. Um, you know stuff in if I need to. Um, now that's the the main section of it set up. I'm going to show you the mixer now because this is where it starts to get complicated. So what I've done, I've got my master channel here and there's nothing on this, and then I have a pre master. So what I've done, I took up my synth, but then I've got uh, what I've then done is I've then highlighted all these again, and I've rooted directly to this pre master. So these all are rooted to the pre master. So they all go into the pre master before they go into the, the end. So if I was to start playing this, then mute this. Nothing will play. And the reason for this is, uh, so there's another track as well, and the reason for this is, um, so they all go into this pre-master and then there's nothing on the master. And the reason being is I always start my mix, uh, when I'm starting a mix and stuff, I will tend to very, very early on put a mastering chain on. I'll go into that in more detail in a minute, but. I'll very early put a mastering chain on. So if I'm comparing a track, if I have a reference track in, and you know my master chain is on my master bus, then when I play my reference track, it's going to be affected by my master chain. Um, so it's in other doors, it's very very simple logic and all that stuff. It's very very simple. It's already pre-set up like that in NFL Studio. You have to set up yourself. So then 
I will go to this track here, 98, and this isn't rooted to this, so all of them are rooted to this apart from 98. So what you do with this is you dock this to the left. Sorry. You dock this to the left, and this then becomes your reference track. So then when you bring a reference track in, you route it to this track. So this track goes straight to the master, and your pre goes straight to the master. So when I'm comparing um, the reference tracks, so if I've got, say, I've got a, a, a reference track here, across the top when i'm comparing it i can fl quickly flick, flick over between the reference track and the pre-master um, without any of these without the, the master settings affecting the master channel so um, i can quickly see you know where i'm going wrong you know what what i need to do what i need to change so that's how i will um start a track if i'm if i'm going off a reference track i would always advise you go for reference track i spoke about it before um so back to what we're saying there about um mastering uh, sort of a pre-master so what I would tend to do is I want to start a track is very very quickly on I want to get the notes down or I get a riff going or I get a drum beat going and then I would very very quickly on in the mix put on a pre-master onto my track so I know some people say don't uh, some people say do I always do I always mix into a master into a master bus so I put my master bus on and then I mix into that master bus and at the end of it I'll take the master bus off Mix the track down and then go and bring it back in again so as one wave and then I will then put the master bus back on it and, and tweak it. So I have a, a master chain set up which I put on to the master bus very very early on in the mix and then like I said I mix into that. So this is on, so this will be on and I'll have maybe a beat or something in the background and then I work that way. I add sims and stuff in so I know how it's going to sound once my masters once it's on because these master settings are very very similar to the the overall master settings I use when I master my track. Sometimes they're right, they're exactly the same. Sometimes I just reload this back up again. Um, so that's how I will start a track. So I will when I'm, when I first sit down at the the, the laptop or the, the PC to to start the mix. I, I, the first thing I do is two things. Am I just messing around? Am I do I have no idea direction where I'm going? If that's the case, I will load up the blank template. If I have a, an idea or a reference track that I want to use, then I will load up the second. Um, and I will load up the pre, the pre master with FX, um, and that's how we'll, that's how I start a mix. Um, so talking about organising samples and whatnot, um, I don't really use this. Now I, that's why it's auto hid. But the only thing I use this for is my favourite effects. So I've made a, a pack of my favourite effects that, I, that you can use on any track in any genre, um, and I, so they're quickly for me to grab when I'm quickly grabbing them. Now my simps, the way I've laid my simps out is now changed because of the the tree mode in the new FS Studio 12.5. So I've renamed all these myself. So I have a, an audio mix, an audio and sampler, which gives me the audio track, sound font and sampler. I have guitars, where I've used the, the ample guitars. I have MIDI for a MIDI. And I have synth, FL Studio synths. I, I don't tend to use these a lot. Um, I would use Citrus now and again. And then I have my main synths. So you've got Anna, M1, Massive, Nexus, Serum, Spire, um, that shouldn't be there. I don't know why that's there. Um, silent for true pianos, and then this expand. And then I have other sims. Other sims that I will sometimes use, not 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 use quite a lot. And I've got sort of Diva, uh, Dune, Hive, Rivero, uh, Kick, uh, Contact, Surge, um, Simp One, and Zebra. Then I have uh, this uh, section, which just got all these. These are all um, sort of. Emulate uh, modeled on the the, the old simp so they look the CS80 and the Jupiter 8 and stuff. Um, and then I have synthwave simp, so these are the ones that I would use mainly for synthwave if I'm making synthwave. Um, so they're all in there the Dext and the uh, Monopoly and Mono Fury, which is a great replica of that. Um, and then I go on to free VST, so these are just some free VSTs that I've picked up along the way. Um, this one here is very, very good if you want to get hold of this one. Um, I've looked at this in a, in, a, in a past video. So, yeah, I've looked at that. Yep, I've looked at that in the past video. Um, so, that's how I would go about setting up my sim. So, the, the easy access for me. So, I know straight away, right. So, I want to add a kick in here now. Uh, I want it in audio, bang, audio. Uh, okay, so let's bring in a, in, in a sim. Let's bring in, say, say Serum. Um, so, I've got them in, in the, or, the, the order that I want them in. So that would be the VSTs that I've took a look at there now. And I'm going to quickly show you how I have split up my actual simps as well. My, sorry, my effects. So again, this is all that preference. So I've got these split up in a separate. So my compression is split in a three. So I've mul a limiting compression, 
I have multi band and they have uh, just standard compressors. Um, controller, uh, formerly control and peak controller. I would use a peak controller now and again. Then I have my delay set up, uh, my distortion plugins, EQ plugins. I also have a section for fab filter because fab filter makes some great stuff. So I have their own section of fab filter plugins. Um, so if, if, if I know what I want to go on it, so if I'm thinking what will I put on it, will a compressor go on it, will I uh, you know, multiband it, will I just EQ it, will I add some distortion, I would tend to use these. Uh, a filter, I'm a filter set up. I have some FL Studio plugins because I don't tend to use a lot of FL Studio plugins. The only ones that I would use maybe the uh, Transient Processor, the Sound Godizer and Maximus. So I have a section there for the FL Studio plugins. I have um, uh, Flanger. Uh, I have my mastering. These are normally what I use when it comes to mastering. Um, I have the Oxford, again, as their own section because they're, they're quite good. I have the Reverb. I have a, a stereo effect tools, effect stereo imaging, volume control, like kickstart, stuff like that. Um, then I have this reference plugin, which is for uh, headphones. Um, I'll look at that in another video. So basically, headphones, I'm sure you uh, all have different EQs built into them. Once you turn this on, it basically makes your headphones um, flat, so you're not, so it's easy to mix with. Then I have some free plugins down here that I've looked at in other videos. And then I have Dead Duck. These are all f uh, free plugins you can grab. Um, I've been using these on, on now and again. Um, and I'll maybe make a video in the future on some of these uh, Dead Duck plugins. Some of them are really, really good. And again, these are all free. So if you just Google uh, Dead Duck VST, um, you'll, you'll get these. So there's another section here, Miscellaneous. So these are plugins that I don't uh, really want to put in a category. Um, so I've put them in their own. So I've got a Vintage Exciter. Um, I have the, the CLA drums and um, vocals I use quite a lot. I have the glitch, the tape stop. I have Edison in here. Even though it's FL Studio, I have it in here because it does a different job for me. Um, Gross Beat, I have in here. Uh, very well used. I have the uh, JJP, um, some of them plugins. I have some of the uh, waves. I've left the new tone and picture. I, I don't really use those. Um, and then I have the transient designer, SPL transient designer and, and twin tube as well. So that's how we go about setting up um, that so next I'll move on and show you my um, how I've organized my samples okay so I uh, go about it a different way to, to, to have many people I tend to add in add this in uh, and then using this here search function search function here click that and then go to the folders whereas I know a lot of people just have the folders down here I do it a backwards way but I'm going to show you how I organize my samples so I've got new samples here these are samples that I've uh, favorite samples or samples that I've made or have ripped from other tracks um, save states don't need to worry about that so these are like 2006 samples samples that again that I've pulled from other tracks or that I've uh, sampled um, and 2017 the same this is one that I just just recently got I'm testing this out now and um, so cinematics have got their own little folder uh, MIDI if I ever make MIDI files or anything like that, I'll put them in there. Sample Magic is its own folder. I have Keshmar, um, Keshmir Sounds 1 and Sounds 2. I have Stems. So these are stems that I download from Remix parts. So if you've got, that's one good thing you can do is you can download from Remix competitions and likes of uh, Keshmar and, and Ferry Carlson do these Remix competitions and you can literally go in and you've got access to some great rate sounds here that are already sort of pre-processed and you can just rip them and use them straight in your tracks um, then I have my old samples these are samples that I've collected like over the years I mean look at these when I were dragged over I tend not to use these very much but these are they're always there in case I need them um, and these are Vengeance so Vengeance I'm very very fond of Vengeance um, I love everything Vengeance does uh, so it's Vengeance has its own separate folder so then I go into this genre and instruments. So rather than have every single um, sample pack just shoved in and then having to search through it, I have my favourite ones there, uh, categorised like that. And then in genres, I have just the different types of genres. So if it's big room, um, EDM, you know, guitar, Melbourne house, synth wave, um, tropical house, anything like that. Any sample pack I have, I have in there, so it's easy for me to reference. Um, so that's how I go about setting up my my samples and uh, and my VSTs and my effects and stuff like that. Each person can can work your own way. One thing I would advise is obviously set up a couple of templates to get you straight in um, 
to to mit to the track because the last thing you want to do is mess around dragging stuff in and setting stuff up and um, so that's just a, a quick way of how i make um how i start my tracks and um, very very early process to how i start my tracks and um, later on in other videos i'll show you then how i actually dive into getting the the first few elements down of the track um but for now that's about it guys thanks for watching